services and is taking steps to ensure we are able to meet that goal. As difficult and uneasy as it may be, we continue to ask our citizens and our businesses to do the right thing so that we can get back to a more normal situation sooner than would happen if, if we did not act this way. We have, we have a certain responsibility to, to uphold here. We will continue to monitor activity and disperse crowds to ensure the governor's guidelines were followed. City Council urgently asks each citizen to stay at home unless there is a critical need that cannot wait until a later date. If you are sick, you should not be out, even for essential activities. You should stay home and prevent spreading the illness. If you have the symptoms of the coronavirus, you should seek medical attention. It is hard to comprehend an enemy that is so deadly, that is so invasive, cannot be seen, heard, felt, or smelled. We must fight this enemy with knowledge, common sense, and vigilance. We have faith and belief in our citizens that we will all rise to the challenge and that, and that we will be proud, as we always have been, of our community. We can do this. We promise to do our best, and we know that you will too. And for any person who does not take this seriously, let us be clear. Recklessness and selfish behavior can mean a devastating outcome for a friend, family, or, or a fellow citizen. We are all counting on every person to do the right thing. Please do not be the one who endangers all of us. We would like to take a moment to express our heartfelt appreciation to the people leading us through this crisis, our healthcare professionals and workers, and first responders on the front line, and those workers who are performing essential duties, providing basic needs and services. We are proud of you your efforts, and all the sacrifices made on behalf of our community. We cannot properly express the appreciation we have for what you have done and what you continue to do. Thank you to each person who has performed an act of kindness, and there are many. Mask makers, grocery, meal, and supply deliverers those who are supporting uh, the people on the front lines with equipment or financial assistance, and those who are simply being kind, tipping more, and sharing words of encouragement. And to those businesses and individuals who are doing the right thing and struggling, we see We will continue works alongside you to help any way we can. We are all truly in this together. We are one, and we are one community. We will get through this, the separation, the loss, and the grief, and we will stand strong together. When the sun rises on a new day, we will be there, and that day will come when everyone does their part. This is the community we know and we love. We will now call to order the Beer Board for the City of Maryville, uh, Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. Would you call roll, please? Councilman Hunt? Here. Councilman Metz? Here. Councilman Swan? Councilman White? Mayor Taylor? Here. So we do have a quorum. Item one on the beer board is consideration of a motion to grant an on-premise beer permit to Matthew J. Roberts doing the business of Waterfront Restaurant Company, Waterfront Bar and Grill, 404 Greenbelt Drive, Maryville, Tennessee, 37804. This is a business that is not moving, but has changed ownership, and they do meet the requirements of the permit. So we will entertain a motion to uh, grant this permit. So second. Any questions or comments? Darling, call the roll, please. Councilman Hunt? Aye. Councilman Metz? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. 
So the motion passes and the permit will be granted. Item number two is consideration of motion to grant an off-premise beer permit to Anna Isabel Soto doing business as the intended 1431 Parker Avenue, Merrill, Tennessee 37804. This is uh, a permit that uh, the current recipient still has, but is moving the building, so uh, they're moving the business. Uh, so they do meet the requirements of the permit also. Uh, is there a motion uh, to grant this permit? So moved. I second. Second. Any other questions or comments? Barnum, call the roll, please. Councilman Hunt? Aye. Councilman Metz? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. The motion passes and that permit will be granted. So we will close the beer board and open the first public hearing, which is a public hearing regarding an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Maryville, Tennessee by rezoning a portion of the parcel 15100 on Blount County tax map 0581 Group A located on Montville Road from the residential to the neighborhood district. Uh, 
clarify for folks, you're talking about the parking lot that's across from Roger Newman and the Victory Baptist, and, and then the grassy field behind Victory Baptist by the middle school. That is correct. That is correct. The strip behind the church and the corner across from Roger Newman. And the Planning Commission has recommended? Planning Commission that. recommended that on March 16th. I now, why not office for it? That was, um, that was not part of the proposal. Those folks wanted it to be. They just requested that. Yeah, they requ the, they, the church is requesting that with the product. Yeah, they, um, offices allowed within that uh, zone, so we, we don't designate what use within that zone would be required. But office would be a little bit more restricted as far as, let's say, commercial activity. Than right. It would be, yes. Right. But again, that's not what they requested or what planning commission put forward. And, and office would be compatible with our mixed use yes. plan. Yes, yes, right. offices are allowed. I think the neighborhood zone would be more compatible with the mixed use uh, land use concept, though. I mean, that would allow a broader and some smaller uses. More uh, mm -hmm. retail, less side. Right. right. Do you ever see these two zones melding together? I mean, that seems to be always a, an issue every time somebody requests office for a neighborhood. That's a good point. I, I think there would be some neighborhoods you would want to be more restrictive mm -hmm. to keep the office that would not uh, generate the kind of traffic that maybe a, a small retail would. Uh, some, in some areas, I, I think it's a good option to have, though. Any, any questions? Okay. Um, I will read the comments, sure. as I said, just for the record so that you, you know. Um, let's see. He had uh, Jordan Clark. Um, you're seeing me a lot tonight because I'm, I'm the B team filling in for, for the public services group to minimize our people here. Um, he said he had a phone call last week with Sharon Lord, who lives at 414 Bayberry Court. She came to the first planning commission meeting that it was on. Um, we ended up moving it, um, tabling it because the representatives weren't there. Um, I explained to her the revised request and she wasn't sure if she was for it or against it. She's just concerned about potential road or driveway coming off South Cedar that would run behind her house. She's referring to the area that used to be a driveway for one of the houses the church demolished. I told her I wasn't aware of any plans for that and she didn't seem to be as concerned with the rezoning. She is very concerned about the property maintenance issues and is the one who originally kicked off the, um, the codes case about the rubble and everything from the demolished house. She was generally unhappy with the maintenance and upkeep of the vacant church property. And she was also very unhappy that the meeting and public hearing were still being held and wanted to make sure that was expressed to city council. Um, the written email that Jordan received on the next page is, um, we own property across from Victory Baptist Church at 1016 Moscow Road. This is a new home built 19 months ago. The home was built to blend into the historic district, and we spent a good bit of money to add some extras, such as stone and columns on the front porch. We knew the church and convenience store were there when we purchased the property, but we strongly feel that changing the zoning from residential to neighborhood would allow other uses that would devalue our home. Thanks for allowing us to express our opinion. Dan and Chris Johnson. And then earlier this afternoon, Jordan spoke with Robert Shipley at 406 Montville Station Road. He was at both the Planning Commission meetings. He's not necessarily for or against the rezoning, but is generally opposed to anything that's going to be higher traffic there, such as a convenience store or retail. Um, and, and as we said, retail is not allowed by right, but convenience without a gas station. Andrew, do you think the future road construction on Montville, whenever that occurs, uh, will impact the, the small parking lot there much? I don't think so. They're really stopping at Montville Station right now. Um, so there may be a little bit of right away or Thank corner, you. but I don't think it'll be very, very much impact. Well, basically it will, but I'm not sure in our lifetime. Um, yeah, yeah, COVID or no COVID. <laughs> That's a, yeah, um, I, will, I will point out that 1016 Montville Road, even though it's close to the historic district, is not in the historic zoning overlay. Uh, it's, it's outside of what I've been I mean, that doesn't mean we don't appreciate the work they've done to. Yeah, it's a very attractive house. Yeah, have, have them track the 
surprised the planning commission didn't say let's put it in his office, even though it wasn't in the request. I mean, you can you can resolve whatever. It seems like to me that's a little bit more compatible with the back with the back side lot, front side lot. I wouldn't have any issue with this. Right. Uh, with it, with the traffic, it's going to be on Montbell and on Montbell Station, but the back lot you'd think would be more. If I'm not mistaken, office and that. If I'm not mistaken, I believe everything around in this neighborhood already. Yes. Right. right, and and the fact is that was it. in the um, the land use concept plan, so we yeah. we had to approve it. So um, that should have been addressed earlier, I suppose. But I I, I think that the uh, restrictions on the neighborhood zone are such. Property itself, and to I don't think you're going to see something that's going to be wildly out of uh, line with the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I think the small lot you're going to be difficult to have anything there. Yeah, the parking lot. Yeah, but absolutely. Other, other comments or questions? Um, you have a motion? No, we just this is still a public hearing. Okay, so we will close this public hearing and open public hearing number two, which is a public hearing regarding an ordinance. In 14 2093 of Title 14 of the Maryville Municipal Code, the zoning and land use ordinance pertaining to medium spacing of access point, minimum spacing of access points for the Parkway District overlay. Thank you. This is you again. It is. It is. Um, so, as you mentioned, this is a request to amend um, 14 2009 of our zoning and land use ordinance of the Municipal Code. Um, development services and and public services in general is requesting an amendment to the minimum spacing of access points. Um, the Parkway District runs pretty along 321 within our city limits. And it was established so that it would protect the natural beauty of the mountains and, um, and it also wanted to um, be developed, develop that area at such a scale so that it blends in un unobtrusively with nature. It's also intended to expedite kind of the free flow of traffic and not have a lot of stop, stop and stop, stop and start <laughs> interactions um, and just have unnecessary points of ingress and egress. Um, as, we, as we've looked at this and as, as what can get built out on 321 has been getting, getting built out, um, our requirements require that if it's a 55 mile per hour um, area with a, a divided highway with two or four lanes that we can only have access every 600 feet. Um, as, again, as we've been looking at that, um, that's really not conducive to somebody that may have a parcel that's only got 200 foot of road front and its neighbors have, have ingress and egress. So um, we're recommending that we eliminate that 600 feet and go to 400 feet, which is in line with what TDOT requires um, in general. We, um, our traffic, um, our city engineer thinks this is very reasonable for traffic um, there, 400 feet. We wanna clarify how the distance between the access points is measured. That's very unclear in the ordinance now. So we wanna say it's center to center um, from the access. Cause you know, some of them are 30 feet wide and that can make a difference of whether you can meet that or not. Um, provide a means by which staff could, al staff could allow for a secondary access to a property within the spacing requirement when a need is demonstrated through a traffic impact study. So we're saying um, that you could go um, smaller than the 400 if a traffic engineer and study by a licensed and professional engineer has shown that, that there really needs to be a second access for what's going there. Again, um, we prefer the secondary access to be right in, right out. We still want it as far away as possible. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, just kind of provide a means of relief for those lots that are individual lots that don't really, can't really comply with the minimum access points. Um, so another uh, thing is for a property with an existing access point where the speed limit is at least 55 miles an hour, staff may reduce the minimum required spacing for a secondary access point. The lot must have a road frontage of at least 200 feet and that traffic impact study will come into play. Um, it'll be placed as far apart as possible and right in, right out would be the preferred secondary access. Um, if, if any of those things can't be done internally um, and for existing lots of record, 
that can't meet these spacing requirements, um, the Board of Zoning Appeals can grant a special exception to allow an access point for the lot. Um, in determining whether to grant the special exception, the applicant shall provide the following evidence to the board, and the board shall affirm all the following. There is no current access for the property already. No joint easement or frontage road exists that the applicant can use. The applicants made all reasonable attempts to comply with the requirements of the ordinance. Um, that's including negotiating with adjoining property owners for access and all of those things. Situation was not created by the applicant and is one that predates either the adoption of the parkway district or predates the applicant's ownership of the property. Um, the applicant doesn't own adjoining lots that could you could use an easement on. Um, Proposed access point is located so as to comply as much as practicable, and the TDOT would have to review and grant a permit for that. There are some locations that make sense that something might be made closer because there is a median cut. You know, we want things to align with median cuts if we can instead of being in the middle or something like that. So, um, those, so those are the, I think we, you know, cleaned up the language. Not that it was bad language, but it was. <laughs> It was uh, not so clear, so that's what um, this ordinance is. We've had a couple of cases that went to BCA over this in, in the past. It seemed like didn't Morning View have a, uh, when they were uh, building the... Uh, I don't so. remember if Morning View did, but I know that our own electric department couldn't get an access either, <laughs> so... <laughs> Designated as Alley 335A. Do we have a motion to 
approve. So moved. And a second. Second. Additional questions or comments on this item? Mr. Arlen, call the roll, please. Mayor Taylor. Aye. Councilman Hunt. Aye. Councilman Metz. Aye. Motion passes and the ordinance passes second reading. Item number three is consideration of the ordinance on second reading to abandon the alley located between Clark Street and South Fort Street, designated as alley 335B. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay. Any additional questions or comments? Being then call roll, please. Councilman Hunt. Aye. Councilman Metz. Aye. Mayor Taylor. Aye. The motion passes and the ordinance passes second reading. Item number four is consideration of the ordinance on second reading amending the Marigold Municipal Code, Title V, Chapter 2, Purchasing Regulations. We have a motion to approve. So moved. And second. Second. Any additional questions or comments on this? Have a come work session and first reading. Warren, call the vote, please. Councilman Metz. Aye. Mayor Taylor. Aye. Councilman Hunt. Aye. Motion passes and the ordinance passes second reading. Item number five is consideration of ordinance on first reading to amend the official zoning map of the city of Maryville, Tennessee by rezoning a portion of parcel 015 on Blount County Tax Map 0581A located on Montville Road from residential to neighborhood district. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. And a second. Second. Okay, and this is one that was considered in the uh, public hearing. And uh, we, we do remind people that they can email or text their, uh, their questions if they have some before the next reading at next city council. Any additional questions or comments on this? The thing done, call the roll, please. Mayor Taylor. Aye. Councilman Hunt. Aye. Councilman Metz. Aye. The motion passes and the ordinance passes first reading. Consideration of the ordinance on item six is consideration of the ordinance on the first reading to amend 14 2093 of Title 14 of the Maryville Municipal Code. The zoning and land use ordinance pertaining to minimum spacing of access points for the Parkway District Overlay. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Once again, this is the item we discussed in the second public hearing, and we welcome comments by email or text to the city. We will address them before the next reading. Any additional questions or comments? Being none, call the roll, please. Councilman Hunt? Aye. Councilman Mead? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. The motion passes and the ordinance passes first reading. Item number seven is consideration of the ordinance on first reading, granting an exclusive franchise to Fort Loud Electric Cooperative to provide electric service to certain annex tracks within the corporate boundaries of the city of Maryville, Tennessee. We have a motion to approve. So moved. And second. Second. Mayor. This is a really just a cleanup. Uh, it's, it's property Fort Loud has served for the last 20, 25 years back when they built for Bell Industrial Park. Uh, we made a decision then to let them continue to serve that area. There's also a couple of parcels uh, around Partnership Park South that they were serving before that industrial park was created. Those, those people were asked to be in it, but they were already being served by Fort Loud, so we let them stay. One thing we didn't do is, is create a formal franchise. Actually, back then, I didn't know we had to. So it's just cleaning up something. That's the way it's been for a long time. Okay. Mayor, this, uh, this is a 20-year? Uh, yes. 20 so we'll time. have to either renew it or decide then if we want to do something different. Barry, the reason you're doing this, these are ones that you can't service or back, back in the day when this decision was made, uh, the feeder for Brookdale, we would have had to go back and rebuild all the way to Alcoa substation. And what we were hearing, the, the type of customers that were coming in there, there was just, the, the payback was just a long time now. Greg, you said 20 years? I think that's right. That's as long as we can grant a franchise. Yeah. That's you get the same agreement, but it's a 20-year term, and then you, you got to re-review it then. Somebody. Councilman Metz. 
Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. Councilman Hunt? Aye. Motion passes and the ordinance passes first reading. Item number eight is consideration of a resolution establishing a speed limit of 25 miles per hour uh, for the Lambert Lane neighborhood and Lennox Drive within the city of Maryland, Tennessee. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second.
maintenance position, which is currently a part time position in the engineering and public works department. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Question. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, as you heard at council work session, um, we are trying, we have requested in next year's budget to, for this part time person that we have who works three days a week to become a full time person, um, which would include benefits. And, um, and we just really would like to know because, <laughs> because we haven't had a part time person since September 30th, 2019. Um, so we've been just kind of filling, filling up with that. Um, just, you know, make and do as we can. We also, because of retirements in our department and, um, and promotions and people moving, we already have two other positions in grounds maintenance to fill. Um, and, you know, we're not able to interview or anything right now, so uh, that's not gonna be immediate, but we would like to go ahead and get our full capacity and get that additional two days um, with, with some help. This person primarily does litter along the highways. I you know, will remind council we've added uh, a number of miles, road miles, on our highways. Just did. Uh, and given additional duties to the grounds people, so there's very much a need. And I might add that we do have enough money this year um, in our budget because of these vacancies with people moving around that we can, it, it won't cost the city anything extra this year. What's in the budget? Grounds and landscaping are considered essential services.
wanted his kids to have room to run and play like he was able to when he was little, you know. So, again, he's not going to be able to develop anything on it, but having that property and that buffer with the other houses around, I think, is why he wants it. Well, the anchorage is different. We think the value is probably, probably not very far away. Yeah. It's yeah. a small exactly. plan. Well, I mean, it's, it would look so much better for us to have those trees along the buffer rather than the fence yeah. you know, built there and those trees gone for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I appreciate Drew working with us on this for that. And then my only concern would be just to make sure you can't try to drain that and build something else back there. Is there, I mean, are you comfortable with the restrictions on that, Andy, or would you put that in the deed? Or? It, I mean, it, it's really not buildable. I mean, it's all within the flood way. Um, I mean, you build a flood way, flood, flood, or no, flood, plane, flood plane, uh, right? It's in the flood way limits. Um, but there's really, there's no access to it. Um, and, and again, it, it'd be hard to be buildable. I mean, I know there are some regulations that if you build six feet above yeah. the flood way uh, and all of that, but um, that's not. That's not the intention, and I don't think it would make sense. I think if it were, were buildable, if the adjacent property and, uh, would be sought after, and it's just not, and it's not even practical. It would be just one. It's a big area for our whole big shit. <laughs> just two readings, or is this one up? It was just a motion for the contract. I don't know what to but I, I, it just seems to me like if we're going to sign the contract and want to proceed, that, that we just do it at one time so we can have to actually authorize the conveyance. But is a motion fine? I yeah. That was the question. Okay. Okay. We don't have to have two readings if we add the, the um, transfer. Yeah. We're over a minute. I we don't think so. First time we hadn't had the first time. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Okay. 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 So,